How many of y'all feel like you work on some hard problems? <laughs> Come on, let's get some hands up. I know that, uh, that you're not necessarily working on observability problems. You've got your own domains that you're working in, right? Commerce, banking, B2B, B2C. Some of those problems are hard. You want to focus on those problems, right? Today we're going to be talking about unifying your application and infrastructure observability. Uh, I am going to be introducing application observability with a bit more detail. I also have a nice demo for y'all. And we're going to talk about Bela in a little bit more detail as well. First, let me tell you who I am. My name is Merle Kranz. I am a director of engineering at Grafana Labs. I am also open source passionate. Uh, in my free time, I'm also the VP of Infra for the Apache Software Foundation. And I split my time between Germany and the US. This picture is actually in the Eiffel in Germany. Uh, it's in the, the Rose. <clears throat> I grew up in Colorado. I love mountains. This is a, a mountainous area, a little bit south of the place where, uh, where I have a house in Germany. Um, you can go swimming there. You can, uh, you can hike the mountains there as well. But currently, I'm living in Stephenville, Texas, which uh, some of you may have heard of if you're from the, the Texas area. So go, Texas. <clears throat> All right, quick overview. Modern systems have a lot of moving parts. Y'all have hard problems you're solving, and some of those hard problems are distributed into hard systems. We can monitor most of those moving parts, but it can be easy to lose sight of the bigger picture. We tie that together for you all with our new application observability solution, and we also have made it easier to ingest data into our application observability solution for you. This is an example application here. Um, this is actually the open telemetry demo that, that, uh, that we've given a, an architectural diagram for. The open telemetry demo, how many of y'all were here for the eclipse? Yeah, that was pretty cool, right? The open telemetry demo is selling uh, telescopes. So if y'all want to set up a, a web shop, then uh, check that demo out. Uh, this is an example where there are multiple um, services in multiple languages. We've got a front-end service talking to a proxy. We've got APIs. We've got back-end services. We've got a cache. We've got a queue. Uh, some of the communication protocols. Uh, we've got HTTP, gRPC, TCP. It's just a very complex landscape. Now, this is a relatively small application, which is why we can get it all into one screen. I doubt any of you are working on an application where you could actually get it into a single screen like this. <clears throat> if you're trying to instrument one of these applications, the current state or before application observability, the state of instrumentations was we had some automatic stuff. So we had released front-end observability. We had the ability to uh, create uh, a nice plug-in with, with uh, dashboards for front-end observability. We've got integrations, so if you're using Spring, for example, you could, um, it, you could uh, use an integration which includes dashboards and alerts, but a lot of it's manual, right? So you'd be do instrument, doing instrumentation manually. Um, you would be uh, trying to figure out maybe the dashboard. Most of this stuff has uh, standardized on Prometheus metrics, but the semantics aren't necessarily standardized. So you'd be building a dashboard for a, semantics, for a set of semantics, and maybe that changes, and you have to keep the dashboard updated. And we just determined some of y'all are working on hard problems, hard problems that aren't necessarily these problems. And you'd rather focus maybe on your business problems. <clears throat> what this ends up meaning is you have a whole landscape of dashboards too, right? Maybe you've got one dashboard for your Node.js stuff. You've got a different dash dashboard for Go, maybe another dashboard for Redis. And all of this sort of comes together maybe into a lot of tabs uh, if you're trying to de debug a, a problem that crosses across multiple systems. Uh, you might be able to make these dashboards yourself. Maybe you're downloading them. But you're probably going to end up having to maintain them if, this, if the underlying systems change as well. But does it have to be this way? What if instead of all these dashboards, we could derive the metrics from traces and then correlate between those signals from our application with the ones also provided by our infrastructure, by the, by the Kubernetes um, or by Docker, um, and do all of this while still relying on open source technologies so that we're not tying anybody into a specific vendor um, solution. And in fact, 
open telemetry gives us possibilities here. Application observability is an open opinionated solution based on open telemetry and Prometheus. This is an out of the box solution. You don't have to build the dashboards yourself. It is designed to minimize your mean time to resolution in your modern complex application problems that y'all are dealing with. This should make it easier to get faster to value because you don't have to create the dashboards. You can use the dashboards that we have. You don't have to work out workflows and memorize them or share them with your colleagues. You can use the workflows in our opinionated solution. And it unifies metrics, it unifies logs and traces and profiles across the so software stack. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about how we got there. Richie also introduced this concept that we have at Grafana of the big tent. We also call this our act one. This was the first step uh, of Grafana into the observability space. We built the, the possibility to visualize data from any source in place. So you don't have to move your data from InfluxDB or from Splunk. You can visualize it where it's at on the Grafana dashboard, giving you that single pane of glass. Once we had that in place, we had learned a lot about the data sources that we were pulling data from. And we started thinking, hmm, some of these things we could do better. So we started out with Mimir. It's at the end here, but it was the first thing we worked on. Um, we started out with Mimir, Mimir which is a, a database for Prometheus metrics, which can store hundreds of millions of active series in more than a year of storage. We took what we learned from working on Mimir, and also we employ roughly half of the Prometheus uh, committers as well. Um, we took what we learned from Mimir and Prometheus, and we applied it to logs. And we built Loki, which is a Prometheus-like approach that works at large scale. This replaces traditional aggregation, um, reduces indexing overhead. And Loki has been a very successful open source project for us. Next step, Tempo. And with Tempo, we added a Prometheus-like approach. Um, we took the things that we learned from a time series database in Prometheus and applied it to traces. Now you can do trace requests across components of distributed systems. And then we learned and acquired a company called Pyroscope and merged with some of the things we were working on internally and applied all of this time series database know-how to profiling so that you can use profiling to discover your performance bottlenecks. So in order to feed all of that data, we've also introduced Grafana Alloy, um, announced last week as a continued iteration on our ingestion strategy. Grafana Alloy is an open telemetry collector distribution. Now, because all of these things are open source and use open protocols, Prometheus protocols and open telemetry protocols, this reduces your vendor lock-in as well. So you can instrument your your systems um, and export your data into these systems and be confident that you get to choose where you're going next from there. You own your data, you make the use of them for your use cases. Once we had, oops, once we had those databases in place, the next thing we moved into was our Act 3 solutions. Our Act 3 solutions, well, we determined that some of y'all we keep saying it, some of you all have hard problems and you don't necessarily want to be spending your time on the observability problems. So we built some opinionated solutions for you all. We took those, uh, those Legos and we put together some nice Lego kits and built you a Death Star or a Paris uh, or an Eiffel Tower. Um, we built for you, we built performance testing solutions um, in, with K6. We built infrastructure observability solutions, especially Kubernetes monitoring is one of the, the most interesting ones in this category. We built incident response management. So we built on-call, um, we built alerting, and we built a, an SLO product. And, and this is where we're getting to the meat of the matter for this talk, we built application observability. And application observability also includes front-end observability, and in this we also uh, created Bela in order to make it possible to ingest data um, from uh, almost any source. So this is a little bit more of a technical overview of, of the architecture here. Um, ingesting data into application observability can work either directly via OpenTelemetry to our OpenTelemetry gateway, or you can also use Grafana Alloy, which can also consume uh, data from the OpenTelemetry collector because it is itself an OpenTelemetry collector distribution. Uh, and cons consume data uh, 
natively from Prometheus. It can also consume logs, and it can export these data directly into Mimir, Tempo, Loki, and I should have added Prometheus here. Grafana Alloy then takes that data that it sees in these backend databases and visualizes it. Um, sorry, Grafana Application Observability takes this data from these data sources and visualizes it. <clears throat> And I would like to give you a view of what that looks like. So what we see here is the service overview of application observability. This is the first place you're going to go when you get into application observability. Um, the application we're looking at is, as mentioned earlier, the open telemetry demo. And one thing you're going to notice about this application is that it has a lot of different languages. You'll see Go, you see Java, you see .NET, and Ruby, Node.js. All of these are languages that can be instrumented with uh, OpenTelemetry SDKs. So this is the OpenTelemetry demo, and we are basing this off of the OpenTelemetry SDKs. That means that nothing here is, is vendor-locked or vendor-associated um, as far as the instrumentation side goes. And you can see uh, that there's a wide range of languages available here. We also, in Grafana Labs, contribute to the OpenTelemetry SDKs for .NET, for um, Java, and we are starting to contribute also on Node as well. So we go in here. You can see some of these seem fine. You've got an overview of duration, errors, and rates. The errors, which is the middle column there, the pink column, some of these services seem to be struggling a little bit. And if this was uh, your service landscape, this is probably one of the first places you would look, especially when you see something like checkout service, because that's typically where you earn your money. You want that to be working. So let's go into the checkout service. We can see the duration. We can see the errors and rate. We can see that as an overview. But now we can also go in and see um, which operations are uh, part of this service. In this case, there's only one operation on this microservice. Some of us have microservices that have a few more. Um, some of us have microservices that aren't really microservices. And you would be able to see here um, the errors for this service broken down by those endpoints. And you can also see which services are affected by this service. So this service is having some errors. You can see that the front end service is affected by this. This might be a point at which you would go to uh, the team next door and say, hey, uh, you know that alert you're getting? Um, we're working on it so that people know what's going on, right? Now, another thing you're going to notice here is that the duration distribution is a little weird. We've got 16 milliseconds for some of those, um, but most of them are between two, millisecond, uh, two seconds rather, and four seconds. That's a problem. Um, that's probably too long on the durations. So if we're going to go in and investigate this problem, what we're going to do, probably one of the first things we're going to do is hit the traces, right? So we'll go in, and I've actually already got the search set for this. Normally, I would come in here, and I'd go into the status, and I'd select error. I personally prefer uh, this edit help uh, over editing directly in TraceQL. Uh, this uh, means that I don't have to learn another query language. I can just go straight in here. Um, and then I can see all of the traces that, uh, that contain errors. So I can click on one. And we see here um, this trace, the, the head of the trace is in the front end. That makes sense. Um, and we see errors all the way down into the checkout service. And we see that the checkout service um, get product endpoint is failing, and we can even see here, look, there's an error description. Um, while dialing uh, TCP, the, there's a connection failure. Um, we could also go in and check the logs for this, uh, for this span specifically and go through um, and see if there's something that we can learn or discover from those logs. And if we prefer the visual representation, we can also go and see which services this service is calling locally, so this is a service map uh, focused around just this service. You just see the upstream and downstream of just this service that we're looking at right now. Um, this will give you a, a faster overview of, of which services might be causing the, the problem and also which services might be affected by this problem. So we're going to pretend that I've handed this problem off to, to Tom, to my colleague Tom. Um, and uh, we're going to go look and see if there are other problems that we can identify in the service overview. And immediately we look and we see, OK, well, we know that front end's probably being affected by the checkout service. Let's put that aside. But here's the product catalog service, which is also having problems. So we dig into the product catalog service. And we can see that uh, all the durations look OK, but there's also an awful lot of errors. 
And we can see also like these errors broken down by operations. It doesn't seem to make a difference which of the, uh, the endpoints is, is um, being called. The, like, the errors are still, still coming, so it seems to be kind of a service-wide problem. That's a minor indicator. Maybe it's an infrastructure problem. Um, we can check out and see if there is, we can go into Kubernetes. And now this, this comes up like, maybe you all have new people on your team that don't know your naming conventions and might struggle to figure out which pod belongs to which service. They don't have to memorize that. They can come up here and they can hit Kubernetes and say, oh, the Kubernetes pod name is this, and they can just go straight into Kubernetes monitoring. And here we see, oh, this is restarting a lot. And we can pull down and we see, um, look at the latest logs, look at the latest events, and we see that um, it looks like uh, probably there's a problem with the number of connections. Maybe we need to scale this service up. Maybe we need to change the connection pool. And uh, we can hand that problem off to maybe to a colleague. I'm going to say that the, the colleague's Jerry, and we can let Tom and Jerry figure this one out together. <clears throat> So um, this gives us a, an overview of what application observability can do. But you might also be asking, how do I get the data into this? How do I, pull, how do I get the data out of my systems, which are complex and you know, maybe have some con contradictory versions? Maybe it's hard to do the, the instrumentation part. Can we move back to the slides, please? And this is where Grafana Bela comes in. Grafana Bela. Um, was announced in general availability last November, and we have continued to iterate on this. Grafana Bela is fully open source, and it is licensed in the Apache License V2, so you should feel completely safe deploying this on any infrastructure that you want to. Because it is open telemetry um, based, that is, we use the open telemetry protocol to transport all of the data, that means it's also vendor neutral. So anything that can accept open telemetry protocol, this can send that data to that. Because it's eBPF, that also means that it's zero code for you. Um, this is interesting, especially for C++ or Go or other compiled languages that can sometimes be difficult to instrument. We're also, though, increasing coverage for other languages as well. We're continually testing this and improving it around Java, um, PHP, Ruby. Um, we've had an interesting experience, for example, where one, where one company was struggling to instrument their Ruby stuff because it had contradictory library versions that made it impossible to use open telemetry SDKs. They just popped in Bela and immediately got some insights. It was actually pretty cool. Bela, as I said previously, makes it possible to do this with just one command. So um, this can work in your Kubernetes clusters. It can work in your Docker containers. It can even work on your bare metal. And it achieves that while getting at some information that would otherwise be completely impossible to get because it's eBPF. You'll see also, for example, if you've got um, a duration in, in your Java uh, applications, um, that duration often doesn't include the time in the queue. Um, but eBPF can include the time from the point where it hits uh, the, the outer boundary of that service to the time where it returns from the outer boundary of that service. So it gives you a more accurate picture. Some of you probably don't know what eBPF is, and that's, that means that I get the privilege of being the first person to tell you about that. Um, eBPF is a technology that allows a privileged process to load probes into the Linux kernel. Those probes are triggered after certain events that are specified in the probe. So as an example, um, a function is invoked in the instrumented application, it can be decorated with a user probe. Or if a kernel API function is called, it can also be decorated using a kernel probe. Probes can read memory, they can modify memory of the observed application and of the kernel function. And EBP, eBPF also provides communication mechanisms between the probes and the user space program. So this way, the um, eBPF probes can share um, information with the user space program. In this, in this case, it's Bela that is the user space program about the observed events. So what Bela does is it loads these multiple probes into different parts of the system. Um, that include application functions, the application runtime, the Linux kernel, the TCP IP stack, and some libraries like OpenSSL. Those probes then collect and report back basic events to Bela. Bela then co coordinates and co uh, collates that information and um, takes, so for example, an HTTP service was invoked, um, it's start in end time, the status code, um, the request patch, things like that. And it can take all of that, it aggregates it, and then it sends it on out using the OTLP protocol. Um, decorated with all of the relevant metadata and reports it as spans or as metrics. 
So here's where I'm going to show you a little demo of Bela. This is a recorded demo because there is a time slot in the middle that we would lose a lot of time if I waited for it. Um, for this demo, we, uh, we um, instrumented the, the services at the top here. Um, we instrumented the, the, the services in the demo namespace. So there's a front-end service, a back-end service, a worker service, and a load generator service. We're going to instrument these with a Helm chart. Um, and, but before we, before we start that Helm chart, we want to change some of the configuration to use some of the newest features. For example, in Bela 1.4, we've added uh, some networking observability. Um, once we've got, got that, we've also got, um, we want to specify that it's just the, the services in the demo namespace that we're instrumenting. <clears throat> and we want to uh, tell Bela to, um, to include the metadata for Kubernetes. And we also want to tell Bela to group the endpoints um, on a heuristic to make sure that we get similar endpoints together. Now, Bela can send data to Prometheus or to o Open uh, Telemetry. We're going to tell it here to send to the OTLP gateway. And we're giving it some of the authentication information that it needs to get the data into Grafana Cloud. Once we have that all together with the authentication information and everything, now we run the Helm chart. And we give it a second, and uh, then we check to see if it's worked. Once we've got that going, we can see, OK, we've, we've instrumented a couple of processes. Um, that has worked. We've got the worker process. We've got the, the load generator. We've also got some of the network interfaces captured. And now this is the point where we would normally need to wait a little bit for some data to come, um, so we have some pretty graphs. Um, so time lapse here. Then we jump into application observability. And we can see that all of these services are fully observable within application observability that I just demoed to you. You can see the duration. You can see the errors. You can see the rate for all of these services. Um, you can also dig into the, the, well, you can dig into the service map. You can see the upstream and downstream of each of these services. And um, we can also dig into the traces, even for Go. So we can see fully distributed traces from top to bottom. Click on one of these. You can see um, all of the function calls. Right? With each of these services. And on top of all of that, and I just mentioned it, in Bela 1.4, we also have added networking observability features. So we can, we've added a new metric. Um, it is called Bela Network Flow Bytes. Uh, we can just query it directly, as we see here. The Bela team has built a nice little dashboard for this as well although I expect we'll probably be also integrating this into our opinionated workflows at some point in the future. Um, so you can see uh, with this, uh, this uh, dashboard that the Bela team built, first we need to adjust it to the last few minutes, we can see all of the, the, the bytes per second that are emitted by um, each service outbound, and we can also check out the bytes per second that are emitted by each service inbound as well. And we can also see the way that these services interrelate. So we see that uh, the, the front end service, this is not surprising, has sent an awful lot of bytes to the low gen service, right? Um, and we can sort that and we can see like which services are producing the most data. This might be interesting to y'all, for example, um, if you've got a lot of, uh, if you've got a large ingress bill or a large egress bill, you can figure out like which service is causing that. That's to wrap it up. Now we've got um, several things that I'm proud of here. We've mentioned uh, Faro in passing. We've got application observability going and we've got Bela and all together. I think that makes an absolutely fabulous solution. I am enormously proud of all of the Grafenistas who have helped us to build this. We've got the Bela team. We've got the OpenTelemetry SDKs team. We've got the teams working on data ingestion on the Alloy team. We've got the application observability visualizations team. And also this work, the things that we've learned from doing all of this has also impacted other open source projects at Grafana. So we've learned things that have, uh, that have helped us to make scenes in Grafana better. We've uh, improved sparklines and contributed to sparklines. And we are enormously grateful to the Grafana team for building out the features that we needed in order to create these solutions. And that's not all. It's not just the Grafana team. The Tempo team gave us an enormous amount of support, um, added features that we needed. Um, and the metrics uh, that we're displaying here would not be possible without the Tempo team. And all of this, of course, is not possible without our customers and users. So y'all. So thank you all again for the support and the feedback that we've gotten from y'all while we've built these solutions. You have made, helped us to make application observability, say it again, 
fabulous. <laughs> Thank you.